30. I'll open the March meeting. Uh, this is the Senior Center Committee. And uh, I'll open up with the public session. And uh, we do have a guest coming, and she won't be here until about 2. So we'll continue with the meeting. Ask for approval minutes of the January meeting. I approve. I have a second. Okay. Bob, okay. Bob and uh, is there any corrections? Any problems with anything? Hearing none, all in favor of being Aye. approved? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So if you recall our February thirteenth meeting was Canceled due to the weather. And <coughs> you're on. <laughs> uh, Michelle Dillman would have been here for February, um, and so uh, March was scheduled for Heather Kaling, our program coordinator, to be here. Thank you for having me today. I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the programs we did in the fall, some new programs that we're offering, and some upcoming programs. So in the fall, I was just getting started, so it was a little bit slower. We offered a program on Mediterranean diet and lifestyle with registered dietitian <coughs> Bill Bradley. This was on a Wednesday night. We also offered an English country dance demonstration and a series of classes with instructor Gary Newman. And our last movie Monday, we offered The Butler, which was very popular. We had 22 people come for our Monday movie afternoon. We got some very good feedback, and people were really happy with the afternoon they spent here. Mm -hmm. um, some new programs that we're offering. Um, the Senior Center has a Wii gaming system available. We decided to set this up on Friday afternoons. We had some space in the activity room from 12 to 2.30 where we could allow people to sign up to play Wii Sports or Wii Play. So this is something that started as of March 1st. We're also on the search for a Zumba Gold instructor. Um, Zumba is a very popular dance exercise program. We'd like to try to get that into the senior center, so I am searching for an instructor. So far, I haven't had great luck. So if you know of anyone, please pass on names and pass the word around. And our next upcoming movie Monday is going to be Las Vegas with Robert De Niro, Morgan Freeman, and Michael Douglas. I think this will be a popular one. It's about a group of men who are in their 60s who gather together for a bachelor party for their last remaining single male friend. So I think hopefully... It's exceptionally good. Is it? It's funny. funny. It's hysterical. <laughs> well, I think it has some big names, and I think the theme will appeal to people. So I think we get another good crowd for that particular movie. Can I just say something? There was a um, request to have The Quiet Man here oh. for March. It's a classic. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if it's yeah. two movies, but it's, we've had it many years ago. Um, but it'd be nice yeah. to have it again. Yeah. 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 Just, uh, I'd be interested to know what we games in the scene playing. Um, we have that Wii Sports game, so it has the tennis and the bowling and hockey. And baseball, else. bowling, hockey, yep, baseball, tennis. Oh, so it's and then we have one that's called We Play, and it has billiards and a couple other games. So we have a few, not a lot at this point. And then lastly, I just want to tell you about some upcoming programs for March and April. I'm sure you've all heard about the Pot of Luck going on on Monday, March 17th at 11.30 a.m. So if you haven't signed up yet to either come to join us or volunteer, please make sure you do that before you leave today. <laughs> um, 
should be a fun event. We have some people sign up. A lot of staff are bringing in some dishes as well. I'll be making lasagna if you'd like to sample my cooking. <laughs> Is lasagna an Irish dish? Do you make that? Or green sauce. I would yeah, hate to sauce. say this, but I'm Irish and I don't like potatoes. So oh. I'm going in another direction. <laughs> Then Wednesday, March 19th at 6 p.m., we're partnering with Left Click Media. They have an office in Northampton and Amherst and one out in Eastern Massachusetts. They're going to offer an information session on streaming media. Um, they're going to explain what it is, how seniors can use it to help reduce their cable bills. So they'll talk about Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, the Roku, Apple TV, all those kinds of services that you can get to either supplement your cable package or get rid of it and have a smaller bill. So this is open to both seniors and caregivers. And when is this? This is Wednesday, March 19th at 6 p.m. St. Joseph's Day. Right. So that's next week. And then coming up in April, we were contacted by Northampton High School, and they're going to bring their improv troupe here to do a free show for the seniors on April 24th at 2 p.m. Uh, this group is led by Heidi Haas. I'm sure many of you are familiar with her. Um, it's a show similar to Whose Line Is It Anyway? They do theater games, a lot of improv, fun kind of stuff very similar to whose line is it anyway. So those are some upcoming things that are going on at the senior center. That's my report. Any questions? Thank you for having me. revolving accounts and grants um, into personal services. I believe it's like 92000 that we owe to the city for uh, our part for the um, personal services. So that usually by the end of uh, May, we have transferred all the funds over for what we are uh, responsible for for our own budget. <laughs> and then we still have funds in our um, OM account, which um, is, is good. Um, we use that for our contractual services and recreational supplies. Um, so it's, it's good to still see some funds in there because it's only March. So that's the current budget. Does anyone have any questions on that budget? Refresh me on this. Uh, uh, I would remind us in professional technical services, what was the good on that? Now? You asked me that before, and it has to be the, uh, the uh, repairs in the kitchen. Okay. So you know, those, those repairs are never uh, uncostly. I think when the uh, suppression system, that was over $300. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, <coughs> dishwasher. Oh, it was actually not the dishwasher, because that we had Bob fix that. It was the um, walk-in refrigerator and the freezer. One went and then the other went. And so he was here um, several times. So. Heads up points. So at least there's funds in our budget um, for the last couple of years that we can have things repaired and not try to worry where we're going to get the funds mm -hmm. from. Questions or can we move along today? Um, so the other sheets, this lawn sheet, if I didn't enlarge it, we would have trouble reading even with readers. Uh, um, so that is the budget, the FY50 budget. 
which would begin July 1st. This is the budget that was submitted to uh, Mayor Narkowitz. And then the other is the narrative that goes along with the budget. Um, and I actually had my uh, budget meeting yesterday, today's Thursday. I had it on Tuesday, excuse me, with um, the mayor and Susan Wright, the finance director. So we reviewed the budget, and as I mentioned in a previous meeting, that the budget was a uh, level funded budget, which means that you couldn't add anything into your budget other than what the city had um, provided for COLAs to um, staff. So that's all that was changed in terms of the dollar amount increase in our budget. Um, what has changed um, this year were we our um, other funds, meaning our money is in our revolving accounts that come from a variety of ways, um, that has increased uh, with the uh, budget. So that has gone up a bit. And uh, everything else is pretty similar with uh, the OM account didn't go up. Um, and so again, reflecting on the level of services um, that was requested by the mayor, uh, our budget only went up with the uh, COLAs that the city had provided to uh, city employees. So you can look across and um, we have our EOEA, which is the um, Executive Office of Elder Affairs, the um, formula grant funds that we apply for each year, and that's based on the dollar amount that the legislature approves times the number of seniors you have in your community. And that was the figure that was the um, grant approval for FY14. If there's going to be a variation in here based on what we believe we're going to get for, for funding uh, from a grant, that could either increase or decrease depending upon what happens uh, with the state legislature. And right now it's $8 per person, per senior, when I say person. Um, so, you know, if that, that is one of the variables and hopefully it does not go down. If it stays the same, fine, uh, more so than going down a uh, dollar amount per senior. Mm -hmm. Then we have the activity fund, the gift fund, then the gift shop is where we um, bring in revenue from the gift shop that we have here. It's operated by volunteers and so whatever is sold in there, I mean, we do buy products for the uh, gift shop. People make things and we have stores that contribute new merchandise. Um, so there's funding from that uh, to assist with uh, salaries as well. And as you recall, we took over trips and travel as of July 1st. So any of the income now and the expenses are paid through this um, program, Trips and Travel. That was um, originally operated through Highland Valley and uh, Elder Vision Inc. And then in, as of July 1st last year, we took it over, um, meaning the Senior Center, Council on Aging, took it over. Um, the Highland Valley Elder Service Grant, um, this, this fiscal year we received funding for transportation and for a companion program. We didn't get anything for the low impact class. So um, I just put in $1,000 from that because I don't really know what Highland Valley would be able to do. Again, that's kind of an unknown as well. In reading Obama's um, proposed budget, um, there is some cutbacks in the um, proposed cutbacks in the companion program. So I don't know in the end how that might affect us. I think there's a lot of things that, depending upon what the federal budget is, that could eventually trickle down and affect us. The food services, meaning the coffee shop, and if you do anything in the dining room, um, for instance, um, yeah, at the health and safety fair, that will be open for lunch. So any of the revenues from that are from that account, as well as the expenditures. Uh, senior publications, again, we took that over uh, July 1st um, from, uh, from Elder Vision Inc. And um, part of that uh, income from the, the publications pays for um, the media marketing uh, coordinator, uh, which is Joanne, part of her salary and paying for the paper and anything to do with the, the papers. And then our transportation fund. Um, is uh, a, a low amount that I put in there 
with the expectation that if and when the transportation really gets rolling, that the fees that would be coming from uh, seniors isn't going to maintain the whole transportation program. Um, it is or isn't? It isn't. Because you know, it isn't, you know, PBTA charges 250 a ride, and we aren't going to charge 250 a ride. The idea is for people to not feel financially burdened to be able to take transportation to come down here. So those are all our funds, and so in the end, we would be, we meaning the Council on Aging would be coming up with $96,009.33. So, um, and as you know, we do a lot of fundraisers, we get donations, we have a variety of ongoing <coughs> um, profit centers like the coffee shop, the gift shop, rentals, um, and other things that we do like the annual appeal. And many of those are all listed in this narrative that's provided. So you can, um, at your leisure, look through that to see what some of the highlights were and um, of what, what we're trying to address here. So this is what, again, was uh, provided to the mayor and um, we'll see what happens next. Any I have a question. It's uh, related to, I guess, the information that you needed to know about, I think, maybe Jim brought up about the um, vet veterans. Uh, um, Big work's in. Oh, it is? Yeah. Say that again? Big work is in. Okay. Um, and something that came out of that meeting, too, on the um, questionnaire that people fill out when they come in to get their scan card, we put the question on there, are you a veteran, so that we can track um, how many veterans are part of our membership. Mm -hmm. um, so that if somebody says, well, how many veterans do you serve, we'd be able to say that, and then Jim would know that for whatever, or any of us would know that for whatever purpose. Mm -hmm. So when do you, what's the turnaround time, do you think, for the application? Three you months. Know, three months? Yeah. That's what they don't, they don't look for anything before, you know, yeah. April, May. Oh, okay. Uh, I put it in January 15th. Did they give you any indication of the company? They're pretty tight. Yeah. Okay, great. Good. Sounds great. Same time. So, you know, I think the budget's um, workable and uh, it just yeah, it takes a lot of energy by volunteers and uh, staff to do all the fundraising or ways that we uh, make money. For example, yesterday, um, Joan and Barbara and a few others were in the kitchen helping make Irish soda bread, so I hope you all buy a loaf before you leave today. Um, and that's, you know, it, it's a nice activity to do, making the bread, but it's also a way that we bring in income. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, that, that's like one of the small things, that continuous book sale out there. Yeah. You know, that's just a, sort of a non-energy, I mean, it takes some uh, working uh, to do the books. But it's not overwhelming like if you were doing uh, a harvest dinner dance. <laughs> and the income is, is very good from the books. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's worth the space. And that lobby, as you all know, is pretty big. So there's a variety of things that can happen in there. I need to bring some books in for you because I just advertised on Facebook that we're going to have books here from my new book for sale. Oh, good. So yeah, I'll bring in 10 books and donate them. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's my Signed? Autographed? Signed? Of course. <laughs> Are we going to be doing like a sit-down where people can come meet you? And Not yet. That'll be coming up. I'm working with uh, I'm working with four other local authors to see if we can find an author day. Oh, yeah. That's oh, a great idea. Yeah. To get four or five of us together and, you know, that are really hurting for book sales and trying to get our name through here. We're trying to get everybody to give 50% of their book sales back to us. Ambitious. You just have to have a strong arm a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're good at that. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions at all on those questions? We can move on to the director's report. Um, oh, Brad, well, it's tax season, so we do have ARP taxes coming every Wednesday, and that's always a very uh, well attended. Mm -hmm. 
um, opportunity for people. But we also had um, the circuit breaker workshop where it's uh, tax relief for uh, property owners and those who are in, par in apartments. On February 7th, we had an agent from the Department of Revenue come. And then Stan Rosenberg, who actually started the um, circuit breaker uh, program, um, also stopped in to say hello to everybody and um, talk a little bit about the program. So we had, I think, maybe 22 people or so for that. And I will say every year we tend to advertise about the circuit breaker, but there were a number of people in that room who had never heard of the circuit breaker. And um, in talking to a few people, it was they were thinking it was something to do with electricity, or they just never paid attention to it. But if somebody um, qualifies, they can go back three years, and ARB tax people are really taking advantage of it um, to get people, you know, um, them enrolled with the circuit breaker. But also, a number of the people who were in the room, you know, it's like they never filed mass taxes, but they were going to. Um, and so it was like, okay, well then go sign up at the front and you can go to the ARP taxes. Because, you know, many um, folks, not necessarily just the ones at that workshop, you know, they they don't file mass taxes because they don't need to, but in this case they would be able to um, qualify for the circuit breaker. So it was nice to be able to refer them to another one of our programs. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had John Seraph and the um, assessor here on February 20th to talk about all the abatements that are available. And a number of the same people who were at the circuit breaker workshop came for that. Um, as you all know, we canceled the February 13th board meeting, and the next day was going to be our, our Valentine breakfast, but we canceled that as well. And um, it was held February 18th, uh, the following Tuesday. And um, it was, I'm going to say, sparsely attended because a lot of people um, who originally were going to come didn't come. So. You know, uh, we can't control the weather, and nor can I control what happens in the parking lot, but <laughs> we, we really do have a, a great rapport, and I think um, a very capable people coming in here to either sand or plow or move snow piles and all of that. So it's just everybody working together with it. Um, the outreach breakfast, I just wanted to share with you kind of the, what the statistics are for that. Um, we started that in um, September. So we've had it going for 19 weeks, and so far we've uh, served 311 people. The average is about uh, 15 people per breakfast. This past, oh, it's Jared. Hi. Hi. I have a seat right here for you. Um, in this past Wednesday, you know, people sign up the week before to come, but this past Wednesday, and Barbara, you might be able to tell me, um, I think we have like 12 extra people who hadn't signed up come, and we always have some extra ready. I'm talking about the breakfast outreach program where we come we moved up from um, Highland Valley, and um, it's you know, supported through the Department of Elder Affairs. So anyway, it's a, it's a wonderful program, and there's, I think, camaraderie and socialization, and you know, some good food in there. Bob's one of the servers. Barbara's in the kitchen. Dying up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the the so it, it is just a very uh, nice program. We're glad to do it. Uh, the annual appeal envelopes uh, went out with the city census, and I got mine in the mail yesterday. Um, so again, that's one of our ongoing um, ways to receive funding, and we actually got our first contribution today. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, excitingly, I can say that Florence Savings Bank, the um, Council on Aging slash Elder Vision Inc. received $2,804 for 2013. And I do have one of the flyers here that I'll pass around. Lists all the agencies that received funding and you know, we're always grateful to um, be part of that. And the event was held here at the Senior Center, so it's always nice to introduce people to the great um, facility that we have. And I would just like to say thank you to Barbara Fungaroli because she really makes an effort to uh, get people to sign up at any of our uh, big events. Um, she's right there to 
to get them to sign up. <laughs> She's aggressive. <laughs> uh, thank you. March 21st, we are having Healthy Communities with Sign Committee here. That's with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and Massachusetts Partnership for Health Promotion and Chronic Disease Prevention. And it's um, putting a group of seniors, not just from Northampton, but from the surrounding area to come up with a, a plot plan on um, healthy communities. Uh, I'm looking for one more senior um, who might be interested in being part of it. There's a packet of information to read about what healthy community design is all about and as I said it's March 21st 9 to 12 so um, if somebody's interested from here it would be great to have you um, so that I have two seniors from Northampton or two representatives from Northampton so let me know and then if not then I will um, move outside of the board to find somebody um, Saturday April 26th from 10 to 2 up at Smith Vocational is another free collection day for the disposal of unwanted medications. And that's always um, very successful. People really do get rid of their medications um, so it doesn't end up truly in our landfills or um, in our water systems. So that will, we'll do a lot of advertising for that. April 26th, um, and I'll just pass this up about that. Um, I'm continuing to work on the senior tax workout program that the mayor had talked about in his inaugural speech um, where um, seniors can do volunteer work within the city um, to get a tax break for their property taxes. And the mayor had declared um, in his inauguration speech that um, it would be up to $1,000. So again, everything's still getting worked on, and at some point the mayor will come forward with what the specifics are for Northampton. Because in calling a lot of the communities that do, there's 145 communities that do have this program, um, everybody does it a little bit differently. So Northampton will um, look to see what it will have to do to meet the needs of our, our community. Um, and February 27th um, at 5 o'clock, we had a PDTA ridership meeting because a lot of their scheduling has changed. And um, it was really well attended. There are always a lot of questions about pickup, drop off, about uh, scheduling in the morning with phone calls being made. So it was, it, they did a really great job um, providing this uh, service um, meeting for the riders. And um, lastly, the Health and Safety Fair, May 22nd. It's our 12th year. It's a great event and pulls lots, hundreds of people into this building. Um, so we'll be looking for volunteers. Crystal will be getting in touch with you. Because not only will we have, what, the 65 vendors or so, but we also do um, lunch. And we also you know, have the coffee shop and the gift shop and other things uh, really staffed. So we'll hear more about it. The health and safety care. So we're excited about that. May 22nd is my birthday, so your gift <laughs> to me can be volunteering. Yay! Yay. 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 Nope. Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. And I'll just mention um, lastly that um, Crystal and I have been working on the volunteer recognition event. This year we're doing a volunteer recognition breakfast, and it's going to be on a Saturday morning because we think more people will be able to come. Um, okay, Jim's making a face. So. <laughs> Don't think it's Saturday morning. Oh, God. It's not till 10 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, it's so you can sleep 10. in and then come. Oh, okay. So uh, you'll, you'll be hearing more about it because you'll be getting an invitation. Um, so, and the, the um, policy has been that if you work uh, volunteer 15 hours, that's who gets invited. Um, so, you know, we have some volunteers who work an hour, maybe a little bit more, you know, could be even a little higher than that. And um, so, but it is, the cutoff is 15, and we really reflected on um, what RSVP does in its 15 hours. So, it worked well last year, and that's the direction we're going to be moving in. We've done it for 15 hours for a couple of years, so that's the direction you'll hear more about. 
that's it. Question. Is the mayor's lunch, lunch with the mayor going to go back on sooner or later, or has people been asking me? Yeah, and, and people ask me as well. Um, my last conversation is the mayor does want to do something throughout the community, not just at the okay. senior center. And um, so it's pretty much on his schedule as to what he's going to do. But I know he was still interested in doing something. So. Okay. And, and usually what I say is, you know, this is what the mayor has said, and I think if there's more definitive information they want, they should call the mayor's office mm -hmm. to see if, you know, maybe something is in the, the works, and I just, I don't know it. But, you know, the senior center would still be open for him to come if, if he chose this as a site again. How has that been with the tent? Has it been well? The pizza with the mayor? Yeah, I'd, I'd say there's, you know, 15 to 25 people, depends what, it, it changed, it really fluctuates. His, well, his presentation on the budget was excellent. And I mean, because he covered just specifically for the seniors that they were interested in. Yes. That was probably the highlight of the whole year for him, but, yeah, my, but he does not cover some pretty good stuff. Yeah. And, and people have said that they really do get a lot out of that and it gives them an opportunity to, in a smaller group setting, to talk to, um, the mayor versus you know doing it one on one or they just feel comfortable in that um, setting. His stuff does get done out of there. People bring it up and, and he does follow up on it. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on the director's report? <clears throat> now we'll move on to building new grounds report. What do you want to take? Well, I'm happy to introduce Jira Jameson, who is the new, but probably you don't consider yourself new anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, executive director for Highland Valley Elder Services, and um, we had um, Jira in um, uh, weeks ago. Um, for a tour and we were able to sit down and talk about a lot of programming within Highland Valley and with the senior center and talking about some collaborations and so it was it was um, great having you here um, for that and nice to have you here for this meeting as well. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. Um, as Pat said, I am the new executive director of Highland Valley Elder Services. I've been here four months as first. Delighted to be here. And one of the things that drew me to the position at Highland Valley was the um, the sense that I had in terms of the dedication of the staff and the board too. And I'm happy to to see that we share two board members, and um, that's been really helpful. Three. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Three board so members. A meeting, yeah, a meeting, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still getting to know all 28 members, yeah. so. Um, so we share three board members, and that's been really helpful in terms of um, coordinating and, and having conversations about services to seniors in, in the city of North Hampton. Um, my background is in human services. I've been an executive director for a number of um, nonprofit agencies throughout the future in County over the past X amount of years. I don't want to age myself right now. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I also have a 10-year stint as a director of development, so I've done professional fundraising for the University of Massachusetts, which um, is going to come in handy, you know, because we do all, as, as you guys know, we just seem to do a really good job of uh, raising uh, funds from the independent funds, not government funding, we can't rely on that anymore, they don't cover services. You know, we're faced with a situation right now where the demand for services, is, as I'm sure you're aware, has settled and increased with the growth of the elder population. And um, <clears throat> our funding has not only well, not increased, it's, it's actually increased 14 percent between, I think it's 2008 and 2014. I think we're going to say a little bit of an increase. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're always in a, in a planning quandary about how do we provide more because the demand is more with less. And um, that's a conversation I've been having um, with various of the most of the senior centers in the area, senior centers about how we better collaborate, how can 
share services in a way that is cost effective and meets the needs of, of people who need, who need our help. Um, I do want to say that I am, when I first came in here, um, it was the first time I had been in the new senior center, I was, I was overwhelmed with the energy that was here in this place. Um, for me, it's it's one of the, it is the nicest senior center in the area in terms of space and activity. It's bustling. People are happy. There's stuff going. There's people exercising here. I was trying to figure out a Zeno on the computer. <laughs> there were people in the in the coffee room. Uh, Jim was uh, teaching a photography class, I guess. Um, there was just lots of lots lots of activity and. You know, one of the things we're really looking at is we um, have not been real successful in, in the utilization of volunteers in our program, particularly our meals program. And that's where the biggest gap is. We right now have a waiting list um, for our seniors who are looking for you know, new home delivery meals. Um, and I'm not happy about that. Well, we kind of have 11 folks in the city of Washington that are on waiting list for meals because we just don't, don't have it. Uh, that's going to grow as, as um, it's going to grow for a number of reasons, just because of the increasing population, but also as a new executive director, part of my job is to get out there in the community and make ourselves known, um, pass out information. Pat and I have talked about putting up a, a display, we're going to pass out packets of information that you can back you guys to take a look at. Um, you know, here at the senior center, I, I, I saw that there really wasn't anything that's a lack of us sending stuff to you. And how do we make sure it's known? This is the best place to identify seniors who may need um, services that can't be provided at the senior center. Um, it's also a potential a potential place for us to look at some collaborative programming that Pat and I discussed. So, yes, we can. If you don't need to take this home, please leave it with Pat so she can use it for other people. These are not the ones we give out to the general public because as you can see, they're a little bit costly to produce, but I wanted you to, it's the best way for us to really look at all the different kinds of services we have. Um, would it be helpful to hear a summary of the, of the six major area service areas that we do, or do you guys know that, or don't you that may you know it? Yeah. Three of you know it. You don't know. Okay. Um, we have basically we have six, six different program areas. One is called home care, and that's where we um, have uh, home care advisors who actually go into the home and assess the needs of, of elders in the community who, you know, um, need assistance in order to stay at their home. One of our one of the goals of our one of the mission statements that we have is is for to help seniors live in the least restrictive environment. Our goal is to keep them at home as long as possible. Um, the state did a study, I don't know exactly what year it was, but it was really recently that 47% of seniors um, over the age of, I think it was 65, felt like they needed in-home services in order to stay at home. Um, we can't meet that. You know, right now, you're probably at, in 2010, there were 4,000 seniors in the city of New York by 2020, they were at 6,000. So I'm mean, guessing we're probably at five, you know, somewhere around 5,000 right now. We see about 400 folks a year. Um, and out of those 400 folks a year that we see from the city of New Hampton, we know that half of them are what we call high risk, which means they're at risk of self-neglect, neglect, potential abuse, not having the right nutrition, those kinds of things. So as we look towards the future and we anticipate probably half of the population can need some kind of services in town. And um, so part of my job is to help figure out how we can do that and how we can um, increase. We did a 5 for some CDG money this year that I should specifically for the town of Northampton to help us in increase our ability to reach what we call feral animals who really need um, bathing and meals and all kinds of stuff to stay in the home because the alternatives are not pretty. The alternatives are really not pretty. Um, although we have some great nursing homes in the area, it's, uh, from what I hear and my own fear is that it's, um, it's, it's one of the greatest fears of all of all elders is that they want to be in, in, in a nursing home um, and 
our job is to you know, do everything we can to, to make sure that that doesn't happen as long as possible. Um, so the home care is really in home, in their home services uh, with the goal of helping them stay in their homes for as long as humanly possible. And a piece of uh, another another area we do is we do have a um, what we call a health program, which is staffed by certified RNs um, that go in and uh, will do um, the senior assessment in terms of, of health issues and. Uh, make reservate, make uh, recommendations, do referrals to particular doctors or physical therapists, those kind of things. So we do have, um, right now we have one, two, three, four, we have four, five registered nurses on the staff and we have full time social um, Again, we are limited by the amount of money that um, we either can raise or get from the state. But most of our funding comes, um, the majority of funding comes from Executive Office of Elder Affairs, and that's a mix of state money and federal money that um, flows through the state office. Uh, so depending on what's <coughs> going on on the state and federal lo level, that's, a, that's the, pretty much the amount of services. Because I have a background in fundraising, that's going to be an increasing um, part of my job because, um, as you guys know, you can no longer function without that piece. Um, in addition to that, we have our nutrition program, which is a combination of health, health, um, health informational types of programs. Um, we have we have people who are trained and certified in doing chronic disease management workshops, um, diabetes management workshops, those kinds of things. Uh, and of course, that's a, that's that's where our meals program, and that's probably one of our one of our largest programs. We serve. Um, Probably a quarter, close to a quarter million a year, most a year. Um, right now, we're doing about 600 on a daily basis. Um, I would say maybe one fifth of that is in the congregate meal site, which is right, right next door. But the rest of those are congregate meals, and that's where we're struggling the most in terms of transportation costs or just, um, just astronomical. So Especially because you have a lot of rural. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to talk outside of Northampton, but the rural, the, the, the large geographicness of our rural areas makes it, it, it extremely challenging. So it's my job to kind of look at and talk with folks about looking at alternative program models and what we're doing now because um, we, need to, we, need to change, we need to change the model, we need to increase income, and we need to decrease expenses so we don't have a way to and, and, um, So that's like one of my priority programmatic projects right at this point. Um, we also have a protective services department, which people should absolutely know about. We are the state identified protective service um, for, elder, for elder abuse. We have a 24 hour hotline. So if you have any cases of su suspected abuse or neglect, you would self neglect, please call our hotline. The numbers are in, are in here. Um, I don't have off the top of my head, I'm sorry, but I don't have exactly how many, um, what the numbers specifically for that program, but we do, we do have, you know, I think there's six or seven workers in that department, so you know that that's, that's quite a lot. And one of the, how many? It was busy. I was talking to the lady the other day, I was, oh, numbers were more significant than I would have thought. Yes, they are. And, um, you know, some of those are screened in, some of those aren't. One of, one of the goals of that department um, is, is really to increase, um, and they do go around and do trainings for police and hospitals, but I hear from senior centers, uh, I've heard it more than once, if not three or four times, that they have had cases in the past that were not getting referred to the protective service, to the protective service work. And the, 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 the problem with that is they fall through the cracks. And then it could be too late, and these are pretty serious situations. Some of these seniors are really vulnerable. Um, regarding our, our home delivered meals, it's more than just a meal. We, you know, we take when we go and deliver meals in the seniors' house, we do a safety check and a well-being check, make sure that the the, the person looks healthy. Um, there's not a rug crunched up on the floor that they can trip over. You know, we they, we, they go in and deliver the meal, and they're able to kind of take a look around. There was one time which happened to be with one of the local representatives who was 
we sometimes get our political folks to come at our little events with us if actually somebody had fallen down the floor. And, you know, I don't know what would have happened if she had been able to get out, but I don't know what would have happened without that well-being check. So it's, it's a lot Can more. Can I here? That was my aunt that fell. She fell and hit her skull. Ooh. And I had just left. I didn't know that. I had just left. She fell into her skull and she was bleeding on the floor and everything else. That's why I started with the Meals on Wheels thing. But she actually would have died. I think they said that no, I didn't it was know that. just with the pure luck. And it would have been another, and it was a Friday, so it probably would have been a Monday or a Tuesday before I had gotten back where anybody else had gotten seen her. So she saw that on a Friday. Right. So. And we take that really seriously. Um, for example, one during some of the snowstorms that we've had yeah, over the yeah. past couple of months, we had to, and because we have to deliver up in the hill towns, we have to take into account the safety of our drivers. So we couldn't deliver on Thursday, we couldn't deliver on Friday, and then we were faced with the weekend, which we don't do the home delivery meals, and then Monday was a holiday. So we, so what I did is all of the case managers and, and meals people came into the office and they called all five, or I don't know how many clients, five to six hundred people individually to make sure that they had food that was going to last them through um, the following Tuesday when the meals were going to be up and running. We also do for seniors in home, we make sure that they have um, emergency provisions. We have, we have the, every time we're there we're passing something out about, you know, what kind of emergency provisions, you know, peanut butter, jelly, that kind of thing, in case we can't get up there. Um, Excuse me. Do you also provide uh, a medical alerts type system? We do. There, I don't know that much about it. Again, please forgive me. I'm, I'm still new, but we do have access to it. They call it a rapid response system. Um, and I don't know. That's about all I know, but I know that we do have that, and it is accessible to the seniors. So um, I don't and know it if connects it's, with the police department. I believe so. Oh, it says it right here. Sorry, it says personal emergency response service provides medical communications alerting system under 24 hours a day. So yes, that is on. Um, the other couple of programs we have, we have what we call money management program, and that that's been really successful. That's um, we, we do have trained volunteers. They they go through a long training in terms of uh, becoming. Uh, money management assistance for the seniors and we do a number of three things for that either a we help them oversee their cash you know their cash flow paying bills some of them can't write sometimes we just go in and help them write the checks other times um, you know they have determined that they're not at the, that they actually can't manage their finances and we have their families come to us with their approval and we actually manage that. So the bills get sent to us, we pay the bills, and then the families and the seniors get a monthly accounting of, of that. It's called a pay fee system. That's what that is. Um, another sort of big service that we have that is um, we have what you call the ombuds ombuds uh, service, which is a required service that came out of the Older American Act. Um, started in the early 1900s, but was updated in the 60s. Um, that's a trained group of um, certified volunteers who go into all the nursing homes in our in our service area, meet with folks, make sure uh, folks are being taken care of okay. They're the people that if nursing home residents um, have some issues with the actual nursing home, they need mediation between the uh, resident Sometimes uh, has to go up to the, you know, climbs up the ladder to the state level if things aren't happening. So, so we know that our seniors, um, and we see thousands of people that way, you know, all throughout, all throughout our service area. Can I just ask a question? Sure. Um, do, do they go into assisted living, or is that not part of the uh, Older Americans Act to cover assisted living? Since I'd have to check on that. Yeah, because since that's the Assisted living is a fairly new concept right. um, versus nursing homes. Right. I'd have to check on that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
health it program. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, health program. It's the health and the health program. So that's a that's a review we see. I, right now, we're seeing over 3,000 individual clients a year. We generally are, uh, have but that's growing. Uh, generally, we're seeing at least two to three hundred new clients every single year. So. Um, you know, it's my job to help figure out how to do that with less money. <laughs> so, you know, and I think there are some areas we can do. Do you like your job? I love my job. I absolutely <laughs> love my job. It's all that matters. There's one bad part, it's just a deal with me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> then we have the same problem. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I actually really love it. I actually, one of the reasons I applied to this position was I had um, gone through an extensive hospice volunteer training program at the Fisher Home in Amherst mm -hmm. and did some work. Um, I did cooking and I also did delivering the meals. I actually had to keep people who were totally incapacitated. And with Al Phil, it was one of the most, um, I can't even, I, I, I don't have a word, it was one of the most amazing um, things I have ever been involved with. To, you know, it was such an honor to be there and you know, the wisdom and the trust that these elders, you know, as their transition and invited me into to be a part of that with them. And um, I knew at that point that I really wanted to do more in the other services here. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. One of the things I really like to hear, if I have a, if I have a few minutes, do I have a few minutes? Say what, maybe five more minutes? Okay. I would love to hear from you what, you, what you're seeing as the needs of seeing. Uh, as the need, maybe unmet needs of seeing to know. I mean, what, what are you seeing here? What are you hearing? Uh, okay. The one thing that I tell her all the time is that Highland Valley, Highland, yeah, yeah. Elder Services doesn't have a name up there. And it's, to us to help provide that name out there to them when we meet people and say, hey, where, where can I go for this? It, it's part of our job to go back to and say, go to Highland Valley. They might have the services for you. And I think that's one of the things that we can help her along a lot. So, so as you were speaking, I wrote down some ideas of what, what we can do to help Highland Valley. And you and I will meet. Yes, and there's several things I wrote down here that we can um, talk about. Okay, great. Yeah, because we want to we want to start to to look at those as we move into the process. We both have similar problems. I, mean, I do have an identification problem. So does the council on aging. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody in town doesn't realize a lot of things we do. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get our word out too. And I think that's I, a consistent problem for all agencies. Everywhere I go, I talk the phrase. I mean, I, I to the shame of maybe some other speakers, and but I was when I was, I had to go to an interview for our CDBG grant, and I congratulated them on you know what how whatever involvement they had in making this happen. So you you have my uh, not that it matters very much, but my stamp of approval <laughs> up in the you know the, in the, in the uh, town hall. So. The other quick thing I really want to mention, and I'm really hoping this is one way. You can really help us. We um, are going to be doing our first, this is a, a national, most of the Meals on Wheels programs in the past have done Walk for Meals for Seniors. Um, this organization has not done that in the past. We have our first one scheduled for May 17th. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be entertainment. There's going to be stuff for kids and balloons, but we're really looking at the senior center. And maybe the Council on Aging could pull a team together. Uh, I believe it's up online on our website now. Um, I'm going to pass a bunch of these around. If you could take them and give, give some out to your friends, family, neighbors, um, the more we get out. We also have some bookmarks about the Meals, Meals on Meals program. So um, what we'll do is we'll put that in our next Elder Vision, uh, I'm sorry, our next Pan Street Chronicle. Um, for April, and then we can do it for May as well. Great, that'd be great. Yeah. 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 All right. The other thing is, um, 24th, which is, a, which is a week from Monday, uh, myself, 
uh, at least two members, I actually have four members from the board and a couple of staff people are going to be up at the, at the state house. It's called um, Elder Lobby Day. And we're going to be uh, right now in the process of setting up meetings with all of our uh, senators and, and representatives that represent our whole district. Um, I was there a couple of weeks ago. Um, working with a, a, what I call the Massachusetts Home Care Commission about um, one, of the, one of the challenges that people are having is that uh, if, if you need, if you need um, a home care person to take care of you in the home, right now the law prevents your spouse from being that person and getting paid as a caregiver. Um, we're against that um, and so we're working really hard to, to, to see a shift in that law and the spouse is the generally sometimes the, the best person and we met with a couple of legislatures. So I signed it on the line to do that. Uh, no. I was thinking I'd like to go to that. You would? Yeah. Well, make sure I can get the name Okay. Well, thank you very much. I didn't really Why don't I leave them for you to give out? Um, I also have my card, which I kind of want to I'd love it. Anybody has any questions, feel free to call me. I'm always looking for community input. Um, yeah, if you hear something in the community you think I need to be aware about, please call me. I have an open door policy. Mm -hmm. And I did buy one of your books. Mm -hmm. so. I, I do have a quick question about Monday. Is it Yes, actually we are going to be going up um, by uh, not a school bus, it's a coach bus. Mm -hmm. um, we're sharing the bus with um, Holyoke and Springfield. We call ourselves the ASAP's Area mm -hmm. Service Provider Agency. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be going out there with, uh, on the bus, lunch is going to be provided. Uh, so, so yes, yeah. transportation is provided. Just in case you have room. Uh, I think we do have room, actually. Um, and if you're gonna, if you want to go, you have my card. Please email me and confirm that you want to go because I need uh, before we can confirm our meeting with Senator Rosenberg. I actually need people's names. So Jim's go, right? Jim's go. Jim's go. Jared, that's the twenty-eight. It's the tw uh, my twenty-four. 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 What time? We are going to probably be leaving here, depending on the, the transportation issue, between 7, we're probably going to be meeting at 7.30 to 8. Because there's a whole bunch of activities starting at 11 o'clock at the State House. There's going to be a lot of speeches and stuff. And then I am trying to set up, um, and you can bring a banner too, and, and one page brochures for the Senior Center if you want to. I mean, you guys might as well tag along with us, really. Um, you know, we're going to have a table so you can put your, some stuff out, uh, and then we're going to we're starting to set up meetings with legislate legislators from 12:30 on, 20 minutes, half hour report. So I I don't have anything confirmed yet. So I will. I mean I have all the details except their plans. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take care of it. I'm going to email you mine. It doesn't work. It does work. Sorry. No, it does work. It works for about three weeks. I've taken Archie out for a couple of times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to stay here. I don't. I have a computer, but I'm not really. Okay. So if you want to shop. Okay, Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Thank you. We'll move on to building and grounds report. Okay, so um, I think the whole issue about the toilet issues oh. with the uh, handles, uh, no whatever intended. else, they, they're all taken care of. Yeah. I just want to report in speaking with Warren Jones, who um, is a supervisor with um, Central Services, that you know, not every plumbing place in Northampton carries what you need. Um, so the parts had to be ordered, and 
and hence right now everything is working appropriately except as I say that there is one bathroom that now has um, a uh, leak so it's the one off of the lobby that was the unisex bathroom so that's not functional right now but um, the park is on order so other than that our facilities are taken care of um, last July we had the pool table recovered and um, last month um, there were tears in the pool cover so um, we were inst we were going to institute that anybody playing was going to pay a dollar so that we could build a fund to have that recovered um, <clears throat> and the person who did at least one of the tiers uh, owned up to it and so we're working on something that he will be paying for some of the cover because I don't think he should pay for all of it because he wasn't the only one that would have put a tear in it so there's like one larger tear when I say a large tear it's about this big but it interferes when you play pool um, and some smaller ones so um, what does it cost uh, it was three like 385 395 for that cover and it, it wasn't even a year yeah you know, that table gets a lot of use and abuse um, as well as the two sticks and whatnot in there. It's uh, a hard area to supervise. Um, and they have fun playing, and you know, not everybody's a pool expert, so you know, they might hit the pool cue and it goes into the. Um, but no one usually tells us when they do something in there or anywhere that, oh, you know, there's water all over the floor. Children there's and seniors uh, yeah. the same. <laughs> <laughs> they up in Holes in the screen. So, anyway. Um, yeah, I wanted to bring that to your attention and we're working on how that's going to get repaired. Um, this week alone, several people have said that, um, I think this is kind of cute, uh, that our senior center is too small, that we need more programming space. <laughs> uh, um, and one of them with, was about the fitness center that we should um, blow it out so that it's bigger. Um, and well, I'm looking like well, there's nowhere to, to go with it. But yeah, I think, you know, that's like a healthy comment to make yes. that, you know, mm -hmm. um, like last Wednesday there was not an inch of space left to do any kind of programming um, because everything was taken. Um, but just in terms of like the comment about the fitness center, um, in January there were 22 orientations. That means new members joining in January who had to get oriented. February 21, and as of March today, uh, it, 16 people oh, wow. and um, in February we had 133 members in the fitness center and right now as of today we have 124 so that fitness center is really well utilized um, and I will say that you know there's within our funds we are looking at keeping money aside because that equipment is going to have to be replaced um, because it does only have a certain life scan uh, commercial grade but it does get used from 8 15 to 4 o'clock have you thought about um renting equipment in terms of because sometimes i know the gym that i go they, they talk about that and stuff like that. yeah i think when it's time to have to start um checking on the equipment i mean we luckily have not had any major repairs with yeah. the equipment that yeah. rentals would be part of that the better, the, another thought is to resell the used equipment, auction it off here, and use that money toward it, because used equipment is, has a tremendous market for the individual houses. So with, I'll just share this, um, because we were talking about getting um, some new tables that we can actually lift, instead of them weighing 78 pounds each, and, um, that if we have something and we um, want to dispose of it, that we're supposed to offer it to other city departments first, and then you can sell it, but you have to request from the city council if the money from the sales can come back to you. So that would be something that we could look at. Um, you know, so you know, we'll look at all the avenues for it. It's like, and if anybody buys that equipment, they have to come take it out. That equipment's heavy. Nice equipment. Um, so that's what I had to report about buildings and grounds. We have something here, right? That's where you want to add us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jim wants to mention something. Barbara and I have been doing a study on the rentals in the area and what they're charging for rooms and what we're charging. 
and if we up our cost by 35 percent, we'll still ten will be 10 percent under everybody else. So I'm strongly suggesting that we vote on the raising our costs up 35 percent, and we'll still be cheaper than anybody else. Now, by rental rooms, you mean two outside groups yeah. not yeah. doing our classwork? No. Yeah. And that's during regular business hours, not including a building monitor and a custodian? Yeah. The way I, the way I, the way I was tasked, I figured that's, you just wanted that number. So can I just say, when, when I do a rental, um, there's a flat fee per hour. Yep. And it, it's different if it's during the day when staff is here versus in the evening uh, or on a weekend. Um, that everything's taken into consideration what it what is to have somebody in the building. Um, so if you go across the board 35%, you're gonna be alright. So can I can I just add this? Um, if the board doesn't vote on that today and I'll come up with a list of what we're already charging and then you can look at it with 35% on it and at the next meeting vote to say yeah. I mean, that's, what I, that's my recommendation. But Do you have rental agreements board. or? Uh... Yeah, there's an application and there's a fee um, schedule. It's what people want to use. And then I usually do up something that's specific for that particular mm -hmm. rental. So new rentals, 35% more old rentals for a term will stay at the old rate until it expires and then? Are there expiration dates on the rental? Well, they just want well, that. It's usually one time, just one time, time. only. Yeah, usually. Yeah. I don't think it's not a reoccurring thing. Like Bay, Bay State Medical is here for, I think it's eight weeks. So right. that's what okay. their contract okay. is about. So, okay. As she learning in, in uh, learning and retirement. In and, and, and I look at different <coughs> groups because learning and retirement is a parallel to us. Yeah. So their rental fee is a lot different than um, like Bay State Medical coming mm -hmm. in. Or if the organization's nonprofit, mm -hmm. she looks at things like that, but they're serving the same population that we're serving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, it's up to you. I, I, Do yeah, we have I a form? Help. Pardon me? Do we have a form to vote? Well, I think it'd be better to uh, uh, look into this a little more thoroughly. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. I'd like to see. So Patty can get more information, give her more time, and yeah. I'd like to table it to her vote. Next yeah. meeting. Table for discussion next, next meeting and then see what we Okay. And this is strictly for outside people coming in and wanting to use it. I'm sorry, Walter. This is strictly for outside people wanting to come in and reserve a room. People who want to come in here and have a meeting or some kind of event, correct? Outside groups. And they're not directly connected with council on edge. So I will say, too, that there. There's also, you have your outside groups and then you have your city groups, meaning the um, Department of Public Works wants to have a public hearing on Constrain. So that happened, but they um, can't charge. pay, they pay, yeah, I can't charge them, mm -hmm. um, but they pay for the building monitor, for the building to be open for them to come in. And sometimes we have them set up the furniture and sometimes um, our custodian. It's more like, okay, we're letting you use the building here. It's up to you to, you know, put it in place and pay for the building. Well, the city is a little more flexible, but it's no. Right. Okay, so we'll table it to the April meeting. But I appreciate that that got looked at. Well, um, I, looked, I looked at nine places, like the community center up in Florence. I didn't do the free ones, like, you know, I did. McDonald's has that free room that they put out, and Burger King has the free room. I didn't figure those in at all for, because that's a different. But all the all the places that rent rooms, like the World War II Club and Eagles Club, and, and that general places that had those kind of, I was looking up. They were charged once we were charged. We we were between 30 and 37 percent under where everybody else was. So I figured 35. Barbara came up with 30, and I came up with 35. So. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. Um, we'll go on to old business. And... So trips and travel, we took over again from um, Elder Vision, Inc. And um, our travel coordinator, and don't be confused by this, 
piece of information is Connie Young. Um, we did have somebody else in mind, but um, because of uh, a situation, that person um, isn't able to do it. So uh, he would have had a great, uh, we would have really benefited. He you know, had years of travel experience, and we did get all the publicity out before we found out that he was going to be unable, uh, for his own personal reasons, not to be able to do it. Um, so we do have Connie Young kind of all worked at the same time. So she has actually started planning trips and in the next uh, Chronicle you'll read more about what she's planning. So save your money up for that trip to Ireland. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's your background uh, in, uh, in, in the travel um, industry? Or? Our volunteer coordinator mentioned <laughs> Connie's professional career, she worked on scheduling for health insurance companies. Her last job, she worked for Blue Cross and Blue Shield. She scheduled all the travel accommodations for the sales representatives for Blue Cross and Blue Shield, as well as scheduled all of the travel accommodations for conferences that Blue Cross Blue Shield attendees went to. Um, she belongs to um, another, a travel club for her, just her own personal travel. Um, that she's been a member of for the past 10 years. So she has a lot of experience doing group travel as a participant, and she's been on tra trips that we've done in the past as well, as well as East Hampton has done in the past. So Good. she's looking forward to taking all of her experience, both professionally and personally, and you know, putting together a wonderful program for us. Good. She's very organized. Um, she's very on top of things. Like she had a trip that she wanted to do for May um, in collaboration with the East Hampton Council on Aging for this Motown event at Foxwoods. But by the time she got all the information to us, for us to put it in the newspaper and then get the deposit and, or get the full payment in, it literally would have been like three weeks. And we were like, um, that's cutting it a little bit. Yeah. We appreciate her enthusiasm, but it was like she's cracking the way, <laughs> which is good. It's good to have you know somebody who's, yeah. who's Got that much yeah. 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 Very dynamic. Yeah, so we're very uh, pleased to have her. Patty mentioned the St. Patrick, uh, the Ireland trip. Mm -hmm. St. Patrick's Association is once again going somewhere between the two. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. That's a perfect yeah. 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 yeah, we're interested in collaborating, and she is on board. She is a team player willing to work with you know other agencies and with travel she's definitely she's not she doesn't have to be the be all say all which is wonderful <laughs> <laughs> okay we'll move on to the country crime yep so um as you know we do the issue um, that's put in the as the insert is what we call it every other month and then we have our regular publication and um, so I'm putting together what it has cost thus far for the paper um, it's the printing the postage um, the salary the delivery so all of that to see where we are um, to make sure that it is something that we can continue to do both the insert and the uh, paper um, the insert is great because it goes to 17,000 people, of which the communities you want people to know what you're doing. It's, it's you know what you, you want people to join in on at least the knowledge of what a senior center is and can do. Um, but if if we ever went in a direction just with inserts, we would have no advertisements because we can't put advertisements in there, paid advertisements. Which that's how we run the whole thing to begin with, other than some donations. So. Um, that's still, that'll get all figured out. We've got other six issues a year that we're doing the advertisements in anyway, so. Right, but we, if we just, well, yeah, there's a lot to look at to yeah. make sure we are breaking even with that, and not just breaking even, but that we are, um, you know, that there's some additional revenue in there that pays for other things. Yeah. I did recommend to uh, the uh, Simon Valley Open Service Board, this is before Jim came on board, that they look into the insert also because they're having a recognition about it. Yeah. 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 
So as you know, Chair Mans, the uh, media marketing person, and you know, doing both the insert and the paper was totally new for all of us. And uh, Joanne's been doing a marvelous job to get that out, and yes. it's it's very precise on how she uh, gets it all all out. And and the whole one of the purposes of doing both was one for people to know more about what we're doing, but also. Um, it was to um, let uh, let people know what we're doing in a more timely fashion. And staff doesn't have to come up with one issue for two months. That you, I mean, you do all feel like all we're doing is the paper, mm -hmm. um, in addition to everything else, of course. But <coughs> that you're always working on something with the paper. But it, it's a more uh, current way of doing it. Good afternoon, everyone. It's that special time of day where our donut man donuts are 50 cents a piece. <laughs> They're just in the coffee shop. One of them is a red velvet, and the other is a surprise. So go check it out. <laughs> the, the insert, if I could I guess, yeah. is it, the insert has um, brought people to the center because they hadn't seen Concert Chronicle before. They, you know, a couple of people called and said, oh, I want to do the knitting. How do I do that? So we've been trying to ask, mm -hmm. how did you hear, what did yeah. you see? Mm -hmm. And a lot of it's from the insert, and people are saying, oh. And part of the thought process, too, was relatives, uh, children, grandchildren may see the insert and say, hey, Grandma, Grandpa, did you see? Or mm -hmm. Aunt and Uncle, did you see? Mm -hmm. You know, So it, it reaches a, yeah. a broader audience. Mm -hmm. Can I make a question here? Did you, anybody see the article to the editor? A letter to the editor from the 60-year-old man in Leeds that says there's nothing in this area to do for people over 60. I thought he was from East Hampton. East Hampton, okay. Yeah, he was East Hampton. That yeah, and uh, I, I was like flabbergasted. Like, where, where are you? <laughs> yeah, like, what are we doing? I did see First off, the paper printed it. I thought, Jesus, of all the things to print, and uh, I'm, I'm I've written three. I've written an article for the next paper okay. and an article for the Gazette to go back against and say, look, where are you? You know, this is an attitude issue, uh, you know, there's pluses and negatives. But for anybody to say that in this in this area. He's not trying. He, yeah, he's not. Yeah. Stampton has a wonderful program yes. at the Enrichment Center. Every time I go to the local papers, there's always a group of people so. doing something. Well, you know, some people don't watch TV, they don't listen to the radio, they don't read the newspaper. Nobody came yeah. to this door, so. apparently. Yeah, so I mentioned before um, the mayor had asked me about, you know, looking at the Council on Aging as our name and perhaps calling ourselves something different. So um, just so I can cross it off my list is that we've done something. If everybody could think about what we could be called, um, and then at the next meeting we could reflect on that with some conversation. Yeah. And um, you know, however it ends, it could you just say Council on Aging or Department of Elder Services, whatever it is. But if we could um, actually deal with that topic. Mayor Sarno changed Springfield to the Springfield Office of Elder Affairs when he first became mayor. But, uh, Elder Affairs? Yeah, the office of, it's the Springfield Office of Elder Affairs. But when I worked at Greater Springfield Senior Services, people used to get it confused with the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. Mm -hmm. So they would always call there and mm -hmm. they're like, oh, we can just go right down there. It's right after the longest time in Springfield. And I'm like, no, that's not the Executive Office. That's the Springfield Office of Elder Affairs. And, and then you get mixed up with Highland Valley Elder, Elder Services. Services. So yeah. I think you have to, why does he want to change it? I think it's look, having it to be, uh, ref I'm not speaking for him, I'm just saying what I believe is that um, it's, it's to be more reflective on who you really are in your community and what is a council, a council on aging. What What is, you know, it's a group of people who meet on a board, but a council on aging or a, it's not just us um, that it is, you know, being suggested or the mm -hmm. arts council or the um, planning office has changed its name. So it's just to be, I believe, to be more reflective of really who you are within your community and within city government. In some, in some cities, our group is called the council, as in where the council. 
And I guess it's with the department, department, or department or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, then it comes to the whole conversation too about not calling it a senior center. And that's not part of what I'm saying the mayor's looking yeah. at, but you know, people have different names and then how do people understand what the names mean? It's what we deal with. Right. We're not dealing right. with children. You know, is it seniors, is it elders, is it older adults? I mean it's you know, since 2001 when I've been doing this, I go to meetings and conferences yeah. and it's the same conversation. Yeah. 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 People are very particular in what they want to be named. Looks like East Hampton. The Did they just recently changed or has always been the enrichment center? No, that changed a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, but it, it was council yeah. on aging. Yeah. Um, it's an enrichment center now, but that is still a council on aging. Yeah. 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 Well, they meant the board, yeah. Which runs the, uh, the enrichment yeah. center. Yeah. But it's, you know, so that, that's the food for thought that, um, okay. that okay, well, people can think about it. You can Google it and see what you can come up with. Mm -hmm. Okay, St. Patrick's Day Parade. Yeah, well, it's a little late for this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, somebody had asked me if uh, the board was going to be in the parade or have a float or, you know, the Council on Aging, the Senior Center going to be represented. And I said, well, no, not that, you know, we hadn't planned on anything. So, again, another little piece of um, food for thought that in the future, if that's um, something we might want to do, uh, and it would uh, go through the uh, St. Patrick's Day Association because they do the parade. They, they're the ones who put the Northampton contingent together. So anyway, you start thinking now and... Is that the parade that's real? Yeah. So on the way there, just that's keep that in your, move your heads as you go. This side of Boston. <laughs> Anyone have any for a new business? Very good. Highland Valley. And Kathy and Jim. I missed it. I got all you the time. You can vote in at this time. It was like, yeah, we kind of like said it was going to be a snow day, and I, I misread the, uh, there was other emails, and I didn't just agree with that. That's all right. We missed you anyway. <laughs> uh, Jim, you want to go? Okay, Highland Valley Elder Services had their board meeting on the 3rd, Monday the 3rd of March. Uh, one of the first things they brought up is that they're uh, having an evaluation by the board members and the department heads of Vera Jameson, who was our guest here earlier. Uh, she's nearing her probationary period ending. And we're doing this in online, uh, what was that monkey thing? Monkey. Survey monkey. Survey monkey, Survey monkey yeah. yes. Which I don't think most of the board members had any idea what we were talking about. So we figured it out in context. Don't go there. Yeah. But uh, they have a, a survey monkey in that all the board directors uh, are supposed to be looking up and doing an online survey. Do you know when that's due? Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. <laughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, oh, is tomorrow that morning. morning. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a simple thing. It really is. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so that's... If you're running it, it has to be simple. Yeah. So that, that that's but going well there because Jerry is is nearing her uh, probationary period ending and deciding whether she's going to stay on or not, which I don't think is much of a question, but yeah, yeah. maybe some people don't like it. The finance committee, uh, uh, the audit is ongoing. There's no major issues. We've got the new auditor in place and things seem to be kicking along there pretty good. Uh, Jerry Jameson and Jackie uh, Lamash our chief financial officer, went to uh, EOEA in Boston and had a, uh, a, a, they had a meeting with uh, Director of Finance and Management from the EOEA. Uh, CDBG grant that uh, Jared mentioned, she's in the process of Northampton and Westfield with the planning for both places and they're in the process. The executive director's report, uh, she talked about the uh, elder lobby day, which she discussed here. I'm trying to get everybody to go to that. And then we have, uh, they're trying to get social media committee together to put websites up for Twitter and Facebook. That's been done. It's done, it's finished. Okay, well that's been done and finished. And then of course we, uh, did mention uh, when they're going to be closing, they're closing like you do when you don't get to schools. 
It's the same system. If there's a snow day and the snow day the school closes, I know Valley also will. That's for your opinion. Thank you. Thank you. I would, you I went Monday. I thought it was Monday. I arrived there Monday. If you went there, you would have heard that you were supposed to be there. <laughs> uh, anyway, and the other thing that the uh, director is doing and she was discussing is uh, organizational changes within the Highland Valley organization. Uh, there's a, a culture there uh, that she feels is a resistant to change and it needs to be changed and to be operated on. So she's going to be an ongoing work. On that one, and good luck to her. It should be a long job. Uh, it's an old organization and they're hard to move, but she'll be working on that. In the uh, fiscal, uh, our fiscal uh, chief fiscal officer uh, said that there's three new people in the accounting office that they have hired uh, because you know the uh, previous auditors complaint with our, our Highland Valley was the fact that the auditing department was understaffed didn't really know what they were doing. And so uh, now we've hired three new people in the county office that didn't matter. And the, uh, they're updating, in the process of updating their FY14 uh, 401 plan documents for the other employees. Uh, Nancy Maynard, the uh, director of home care, mm -hmm. home care uh, she said there's now a nutritional volunteer coordinator, a new person, and this person is going to be uh, in charge of trying to get more volunteer drivers for their Meals on Wheels program, which is one of the problems there. Nice if, they can get, if they can get, you have a better they just better yesterday. If they, they get more, if they get more of these people volunteering, they can cut down on some of their uh, expenses on Meals on Wheels, which is Meals on Wheels is a losing program. For Do you have her contact information? Because I have several volunteers that I've referred to that program to volunteer for specifically driving. I will driving. get it for you. I don't have it off the top of my head. Yeah. And they always contact me back saying the person that they contacted in order to work for that program um, was not, the information wasn't received as well. Okay. It was the feedback that I'm getting. Um, well, now they've got this new coordinator this team to do just that. Yeah. Yeah. The other person was. Missing a few points. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know because I always refer people directly to yep. Walter Salvo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're coming in here, and I, Patty, and I have had some experiences going over there to the meal site um, with the communication over there. So I'm not sure if that's the problem. Yeah. I don't think the problem is there. I think the problem is probably back in the Island Valley itself because I don't think they do that coordination. Yeah. Anyway, uh, another. Two new positions in the home care resources, uh, not home care resources, uh, uh, working with tenants. Uh, we have another, uh, one of the persons is working with tenants, the community care advisor working with tenants in Westfield. They are building in Westfield with the supervisor a while and they're working directly with those people at Westfield itself that building will be paying the salary of this person. So, and of course, uh, you talked about the walk, the walking, walk -a -thon, walk -a -thon, yeah. want, uh, and you all got a card on that. How much is that per team or for the walk? -a there is no set amount. Of we time. are in the discussion period about what we're going to charge. Yeah. There, it's a split decision. Uh, some people say they want at least ten dollars a person, mm -hmm. and some of us, me included said walk for free this time let's get our name up there the object of this walk is not to collect the money big time okay they want to make a couple dollars but the object of the walk is to get the name highland valley out there i said if we can get a thousand people for free just to walk that's a heck of a lot better than 200 people paying 10 bucks a hit. And if you say it's for free, a lot of people will still donate something. That's right. But we're going to ask people to donate. We're going to ask teams to donate. Right. You know, what if we feel like it, you get somebody to sponsor you, it, it's we got But we're still deciding, so it's not up for grabs yet. But we are going to give t-shirts to everybody. So, you know, that's, there's, a, there's some, how much do you get for a t-shirt, whatever. And of course, they're looking for, as Jerry said, they're looking for volunteers, yeah. for hours. All the councils on aging to assist that. Um, my name is down there, but I forget for what. You're part of the party committee. 
uh, entertainment. Uh, it's a parody. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna, we are we are going to have some really heavy, some really decent entertainment, and we got some people in. The, we got a lot of stuff going, and if, if we need volunteers, though, that's where I was going to come up. One of the things that you know, if you really want to come up and help us, you give me your name, and because we got some folks to do some things, to, just to be there and. Yeah, mm -hmm. T-shirts out or to be before the end. Someone else in, in, yeah. Yeah, around here that would like to too. Not just council aging. No, we got we got anybody. Anybody. Um, anybody. I I've been I was in contact with the local Girl Scout group this morning. I'm going to meet with her tonight um, to see all the Girl Scouts to see if they can get you know all the little troopy little ladies to with their little brown signs and green signs or whatever they're carrying and now you know go walk around. Yeah, the high school, um, what is it? Okay. It's the, uh, the group that they all have to do something about it. Yeah, oh, the honors yeah, yeah, we've already talked yeah, to them. Okay. Okay. We've they, already, they, they somebody talked like to that. those people, they got that. And the interesting thing that, that it, it's kind of going to be kind of fun, but kind of messes up a little bit, the state Frisbee tournaments, the excessive Frisbee, is it? The one where they the, the, the ultimate frisbee, oh, ultimate. the ultimate frisbee contest are at the same place directly after our walkathon. So we're going to have a lot of stuff going on, plus a lot of people here, and then the frisbee is going to be afterwards. So it should be a really good time. Bring your frisbee. Oh, I will. And to remind you again, it's on Saturday, May seventeenth. So. Yep. I volunteer May seventeenth. I think that will about uh, covers everything from that. Anything else? Okay. Okay. Um, so, as you know, Bill Pro and uh, Elaine McClellan had resigned from the board. Uh, and both of them started in the mid-90s on the uh, board. So typically for those uh, members who have been pretty long-term, um, there should be some consideration for having something for her. So I was hoping Mike would appoint a committee to uh, put something together for both of them. Um, obviously, they'd have to be contacted to make sure they're available. But you know, we usually do some little reception for them. I would say sometime in April. Did she is, say it, is it possible to make it in conjunction with Yes, correct. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a great idea. Okay, so that, that they would be recognized at the volunteer. Yeah, yeah that'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and hopefully that they'll come. I mean, we can let them know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we can get like a, a frame certificate. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's great. From the, um, you know, Stan Rosen and you know, something. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's great. Yeah. 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 Yeah.